Homosexuality is now a lot more accepted in our North American society, especially because it is more understood. However, there is still so much left to discover from a scientific standpoint. With Oliver's story, we'll see what are some of the theories concerning that subject. Once upon a time, a boy named Oliver. Oliver was wondering about something. Usually, a boy loves a girl. But it is not the case for Oliver. Oliver has a friend. His friend is a boy. They are in love. But how is it possible? So Oliver asks to two doctors to explain him. The first one explained that is genetic. The gene is located on the X chromosome. On the long arm of the chromosome X in the section 28, XQ28. This gene is located at the tips of the X chromosome. The second doctor explained that it is epigenetic. It is caused by epimarks, sex-specific epimarks. Epimarks are formed early in the development in the fetus. Epimarks turn on or off genes that will then protect the fetus from hormonal variation. A boy will usually be affected by the hormone testosterone to be masculine and girls need to be protected to be feminine. So in the uterus, a girl, Oliver's mom, was exposed to testosterone and because of the epimarks, she was protected from it. So Oliver's mom was feminine and attracted to boys. Usually, epimarks are erased and not transmitted between generations. But in this homosexual case, Oliver's mom transmitted her epimarks of oversensibility to testosterone. So, when Oliver was exposed to testosterone in his mom's uterus, he was protected from it by the epimarks. And the result is a feminine boy, Oliver. So it is transmitted from mother to sons and vice versa for girls from fathers to daughters. But Oliver is not alone. There are more than 9 million homosexuals in the US. Uh, so hi, I'm Catherine. Hi, I'm Fred. And uh, so we're going to discuss a bit what to do with all these awesome discoveries that we've made about homosexuality. So first question that pops, us, uh, pops up in our mind is, so now that we've fa found a possible cause for homosexuality, um, should we keep doing research to find a cure? Because now we know, thanks to research we've done on uh, mice, that we can change, in fact, the epigenetics uh, of individuals. So should we keep on going with these research? Um, homosexuality is such a delicate subject and it allows us to um, think about a lot of possible conflict if G therapy would be allowed. So I think that homosexuality is not a disease and it should not be considered as a disease. So in that case, we should not allow gene therapy change this gene even if it's at the embryonic stage or if it's the the personal choice of the homosexual so so yeah that's really true so should we allow parents to decide uh if their child that is still growing up in his mom's uh, uterus should if he should be cured from homosexuality or if um should we should wait until the child grows up and is wise enough to make his own decision. Again, if we wait until the child grows up, that brings makes a, a lot more complicated um, decision and 
it makes the situation a lot more complicated for, complicated for the individual once he has to change his entire personality. Mm -hmm. And it also brings the question to what should we decide uh, that is um that can we uh, can we like allow anything to be part of gene therapy how do we set the barriers and what conditions should we uh, have to be like able to do gene therapy and i guess i would be curious to ask homosexual what they think about that subject we should ask them the question clearly if you could would you change would you change your sexual orientation that's the whole debate because that's all about them so we need to know about them thank you for watching thank you